Hey everyone, welcome to the very first video in our How to Make Cold Process Soap series. This very first video today is going to be on the basic chemistry behind cold process soap. Um, you don't need to understand the chemistry behind cold process soap to actually make cold process soap. However, having that basic understanding is going to allow you to create design, change recipes around uh, with a little more ease. So that's where we're going to start off in this series. All right, so my name is Darlene. I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. Um, if you're a previous subscriber to this channel, welcome back. If you are new to this channel and this is something that interests you, um, please hit the subscribe button so you're not missing future videos. You can hit that little bell um, so that you're notified when I post new videos. And if you do like this video, you can give me a thumbs up uh, to help support my channel. All right, so let's get into it. We don't have to have a full understanding behind the chemistry to actually make soap, but having that basic idea is going to allow you to build, create, and design recipes, bringing the properties to the soap bars that you're looking for. So what is a soap? Soap is a simple surfactant, and surfactants are nifty little molecules that dissolve in both water and oil. This means that they are going to be able to clean oil off of surfaces and keep those mixtures of oil and water happy together. We are creating a surfactant while making soap through a saponification reaction. Soap is made from reacting a fat or oil or a mixture of both with that strong base, usually a sodium hydroxide or a lye or caustic soda. Let's first go over the oils and fats. This is the most interesting part of any soap recipe as different fats and oils in the soap making process will allow us to bring different properties to the bars we're making. Each oil has a different property and that allows us to have that bar that's more conditioning or less conditioning. There are two main types of fatty acids, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids. So let's go over, first of all, our saturated fatty acids. They have a very straightforward structure. Now with saturated fatty acids having that straightforward structure, this means that they will be able to stack together neatly at the molecule level before and after saponification, forming that harder soap bar. Soaps made from the saturated fatty acids are also more effective at cleaning. However, this means they will strip away more of the natural oils from the skin. And here are some of the common ones that we may use in soap making. Luric acid is a saturated fatty acid that contributes to hardness, cleansing, and having that big fluffy lather. Palm kernel and coconut oil are extremely high in that luric acid. Too much luric acid in a soap bar recipe may be drying to the skin, if not properly balanced with that super fat or a high unsaturated fatty acid content. Myristic acid will be the next one we'll go over. It is a saturated fatty acid that contributes to the hardness cleansing and a fluffy lather. A lot of exotic oils contain high amounts of myristic acid. However, there's also a decent myristic acid content in the more common coconut oil. Palmitic acid will be the next one we'll talk about. It is a saturated fatty acid that contributes to hardness and giving us that stable creamy lather. Most soap makers immediately think of palm oil, and yes, palm oil contains a whole lot of palmitic acid, but cocoa butter is a great alternative to that palm oil and contributes to that palmitic acid level. Stick acid is another unsaturated fatty acid that contributes to hardness and stable lather in our soap making, similar to the palmitic acid, except that it has a longer carbon chain a lot of butters containing high amounts of stearic acid, including our mango, shea butter, and more commonly missed oil is gonna be our hydronated soybean oil. It contains a whole lot of stearic acid. So unsaturated fatty acids is the next topic. Okay, as you can see in the structure here, it has a lot of kinks and curves in it. This is also known as omega fatty acids. Because of the kinks and curves in the soap, they do not stack neatly together at that molecule level and can slide around and leave gaps, which means in turn you're going to end up with a softer bar of soap. 
Soaps made from unsaturated fatty acids are less efficient at cleaning and therefore more gentle on the skin, leaving moisture behind. Oleic acid is the first unsaturated fatty acid we will talk about. It contributes to the conditioning and moisturizing of our soap bars. Oleic acid is what makes olive oil loved by so many soap makers. But there are plenty of oils that contain far more oleic acid than olive oil does, including sunflower oil, safflower oil, and canola oil. Linoleic acid is an unsaturated fatty acid that contributes to the conditioning and moisturizing as well and is often a contributor to the silkiness of the lather in the bar. Luxury oils like evening primrose, passion fruit, hemp oil are common ones that we hear about. They are loaded up on linoleic acid but are usually too expensive to use in high amounts and do have quite the short shelf life. Renolic acid is another unsaturated fatty acid that contributes to the conditioning, moisturizing levels, and the stability in our lather in our soap bars. Many soap makers feel it adds a little slip and glide to their lather as well. Castor oil is the only commonly readily available soap making oil known to contain this acid, and it is super high at 90%. Now, as well as having an understanding of the hardness of your soap and its cleaning powers, we need to understand the amount of saponified fatty acids in the final soap will also affect how the lather behaves. Generally, saturated fatty acids will give you that solid cleansing bar, and the unsaturated fatty acids will give you that fluffy but and stable lather with moisturizing abilities. So now let's talk about our strong base. Used for soap making, they have to contain hydroxide. That's the little bit that acts up to break the fat or oil and makes them into glycerin and soap. Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are the two most commonly used bases for saponification. However, sodium hydroxide, known as lye or caustic soda, is most commonly used to result in that hard bar of soap whereas potassium hydroxide results in a softer bar and is usually used for making liquid soaps. We'll go over safety and mixing of our strong base lies in another video. Okay, so let's move on to our proportions. Now, proportions are important because molecules are ridiculously tiny, so we can't sit there and count them to the exact number and fat and oils tend to contain mixtures of both fatty different fatty acids rather than one single sort of molecule. So it's not a straightforward task. Luckily for us, there is a lot of soap calculators and saponification tables online that do all of that work for us. The ones that I use are soapcalc.net or Brambleberry has a soap calculator or saponification table that is pretty good on theirs as well. These will calculate and predict the properties of each soap made from whatever mixtures of fat and oils you have chosen. These calculators let us work out what the perfect proportions would be, but remember, we are not using super precise scientific instruments. We are using kitchen scales, which mean we will be quite a few molecules off. If we don't have enough strong base, there will be too much fat or oil left over at the end, and that will make for a greasy bar. On the other hand, if we don't have enough fat or oil, we will have a strong base left over. And at the end, that bar will be high on the pH scale, making it harsh on our skin. The way that we play it safe is called super fatting, which means adding a bit less hydroxide than we need, but enough. The way that we play it safe is by super fatting, which means adding a bit less hydroxide than we need, enough to be safe, but not so much that it makes the bar greasy. This is also sometimes called lye discount, but most commonly it's called super fatting, and is usually done at 5 to 8 percent. So in summary, soaps are surfactants. Soap making involves reacting fats and oils with a strong base. 
this was spe specific fatty acids in fat and oils that you're reacting will determine the properties of your final bar. The strong base, hydroxide base, that you will most likely use will be sodium hydroxide. To calculate how much of each chemical you will need in your reaction, you will need a soap calculator or saponification table. You will want to have a little excess fat or oil, 5 to 8 percent, in your recipe called superfatting, just to be on the safe side.